<laughs> okay, well, thanks for, for having me, of course, because it's, I've seen already a few of these sessions that you did. It was great to see different people and different opinions on harmonica playing. Welcome, everybody, to my, well, it's called workshop, but I'm, I'm, for most of the time, I will be telling about what I'm doing. But first, let me give you a short introduction on what, what I've done. I'm, I'm playing harmonica since... I was 10 or 12 years old. I was born in 1952, so I'm 67 at the moment. So I've played for a long time and always wanted to, to find out what harmonica could do next to what I was hearing on, on recordings at that time. I was always curious about what different things you could do with harmonicas and and that's when I slowly stumbled into theory, into different types of monikas, different tunings. And I'm still doing the same. I'm still trying to find new things that suit my thinking, my way of playing. And I, I could tell a bit, bit more about me, but most of, the most important is I still love the sound of the harmonica. That's, that's, I think one of the most important things. I still love the sound and I still love playing. I'm, I, I don't mind practicing every day. I, I don't practice every day, but I, I wouldn't mind. I've, I've done it a lot. So yes, I'm, I'm, I'm still like a child on the harmonica trying to do new things. And I also already mentioned the, the, the word that's frightening of some people, theory. Um, and that, that's a very important thing to, to be aware of, that you should at least do some basic education about theory for harmonica. The, the problem with theory is that it's, it's not, not that well uh, presented for harmonica. When you start studying theory and you take a book about music theory, you soon will run into problems because we use different keys, different key harmonicas. As long as you, we all would use a C harmonica, it would be simple for us. Everybody would know where the notes are, what the note names are. But since we're used to switch harmonicas for what we call positions, we run into big problems. Because I don't guess any one of you could name the notes that are available on a F sharp harmonica or a, a flat harmonica in every hole and what every bend note, possible bend note is on harmonica. Um, but the good thing is, I can, I can assure you, you don't need to know all these note names. You don't need to study a lot of theory. Um, I did in Klingenthal in Germany, where Seidel have, have their master workshops. I did a, a workshop on theory and I had two sheets of paper and they were all, they had to study for theory. It was their Bible for the next 10 years or so. That, that's enough to know when you start using harmonica. So I, I won't go into details, into, in, in, into explanation about how chords are built. I will, I will tell a little bit about it, but no more than you need to know. And I always will try to do it. And that's the problem with theory. I will try to present it in harmonica language because we, and we are the harmonica players. We, we tend to, to have our own um, go at theory. We talk about theory, but we, we speak about it in harmonica language, which makes it for other musicians quite difficult to communicate with us. Because when I, when I go to a jam session and the guitar player says, well, I'm going to play in F, then I will, and, and I will say to him, well, I'll take my B-flat harmonica because I like to play in second position. He will look at me and think, why? What are you doing? And that's the problem when you, when you start talking about positions. Um, and my workshop is, is meant uh, about playing in third position. But in fact, we should forget about thinking in positions. I use my when I talk about uh, uh, third position, I use my C harmonica to play in a song 
and D. That's all there is for third position. I play a different harmonica than the original key of the song. The, the reason why you would take another harmonica for, for a certain song is maybe you feel more comfortable in, in, I have to use the word again, which I try to avoid, position. Maybe the sound from certain notes that you can easily play on that harmonica without bendings will sound better to your ears. I'm not saying it's the best, but when it's to your ears the best, try it and see if, if it suits you. Um, so the, 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 the whole position thinking should maybe change a little when you, when you learn harmonica. Of course, you have to, to be aware of it and you have to make a link to music theory. That's why you have your basic theory that you should know about playing harmonica. But as soon as you know it, you, you can forget about note names because after some time, you will find that you make certain uh, uh, patterns on the harmonica. And the patterns that I use on a, on, in what we call second position are different from the patterns that I pl play on when I play in third, third position or first or 12, because we have 12 different ways to play the harmonica. 12 different positions, which means if you want to do this, playing all these different patterns and different sounds and different possibilities, you should be able to, to, to play in 12 keys on one harmonica. And I can tell you not many people are capable of doing it and even less people are capable of sounding good on the harmonica. And that's where I always come back to there are two things for me, the most important on harmonica. One is tone, tone building. If you don't sound nice, if you don't have a nice, big, mellow sound, if you need it. Hmm. The second thing next to tone building is groove. How you timing is, are, are you playing a little bit behind the beat? Are you speeding up? Are you pushing the tempo? Are you trying to, to play with the band. So many things you can do with the tempo, the speed, the timing, the groove that you're playing with. And if you can combine these two things, your tone building and your groove, you need less notes than you needed before. Because when I play on my, I will take my C harmonica just to play an example. And I will start right away in, in what we call the third position. So I, I play, in my, my C harmonica pretending to, to play in the key of D, which means my starting points are my D notes on harmonica. And let's make a little sidestep. You need to know where these notes are on harmonica and how the notes are named on the C harmonica. That's the key to become a better player, to become better in position thinking. And after some time, being better in finding your way and the patterns on harmonica. So back to tone and groove. I could play just one note, and if I play with a good tone and a good timing, good groove, people will already think, well, he's playing almost like a solo. And I'm going to cheat a little. I'm going to play whole one draw. Right away with some tone building by vibrato and tremolo. And I throw in whole four draw, which is the same note on the C harmonica, and I switch to them, I make an octave, because I'm, I'm thinking about tone, about the note that I'm playing. So I'm playing D and D, I'm playing like an octave where I play one, uh, two holes at the same time, blocking the middle of the holes, but still tone building and groove. I play just an easy shuffle rhythm. Sorry. almost like playing solo on, 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 on the C harmonica in the key of D in what we call third position. But you see, I'm not, I'm not trying to play many notes 
that may confuse me in the beginning when I start practicing in third position. And that's where we, where we um, come to when you play in third position, you must change your way of thinking about where to start on harmonica and where you play the patterns that you were used to play in second position. If I would play in the song of D on my G harmonica, that's second position, I'm I feel comfortable when I've, I've, I've only practiced in, in second position. Without thinking, I can play my riffs, I can play blues scales, I can play everything I've practiced because I know where to start, where to go to, and where to end. But as soon as I pick up my C harmonica and I try to play the same notes, this is what's happening. You, you may know where the first note is, but the next of the notes are difficult to find because you're not used to play this pattern. And if you think in terms of blue scales and chord notes, these are all things that are essential when you play in a certain position, when you play with a band, when you play with a backing track, when you practice, all these things, basic theory, uh, relate to the position where you're playing, relate to where you start on harmonica and how you move. I could play the, the, the blue scale uh, in second position, on my G harmonica, second position, blue scale. This is the D blue scale. I'm still in this song of D. Now I go to my C harmonica. The same notes, the same blue scale, but I start on a different position on the harmonica. I start on hole one, or on hole four, or hole eight. So I have the same, almost the same possibilities, but it sounds different because my C harp has a different timbre to it, has a different sound, a different tone. And I used on certain notes, a bending where the, the note is available on the, on the G harmonica. So I get a different feel when I play it. And that's very important to know when you switch to a position, you get a different feel and, and, and of course, you start on different holes. My first advice is take your C harmonica and learn all the notes that are available on a C harmonica. Um, study them, where are the notes? What's the distance between the two notes on one hole? Where are the bendings? How are the bendings named when I, when I have them? Then you can see the relation between I play this hole and this hole, I play this distance. I play this step, I play this scale, I play this arpeggio, I play all these things, but you must study the C harmonica, know the note names, know the distances between the two notes, know where the bend notes are, and that's where you start with. Once you've done that, and you switch positions, you, you can think back of how, which hole would I use on the C harmonica to play these notes, and then you can translate it to different keys and different positions. It sounds very confusing in the beginning. This, I know I'm, 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 I'm not doing this on purpose to confuse you, but this is a different way of thinking about harmonica. Now, let's try to simplify it a little. When I'm in third position on my C, C harmonica, or before I forget, the easiest thing to remember, which harmonica do I use in for a certain key, key song. Let's say we have a song in G. The easiest thing is think back to semitones. Think down to semitones. When you go back from G to G flat, F harmonica is third position. When you have a song in D, think down a whole tone or two semitones, D, D flat, C harmonica is third position. When you're in F, and that's where it becomes a bit tricky, F, two semitones down is F. Between F and E, there's no semitones of F, E, E flat is your third position harmonica. That's the easiest thing to remember. Third position, think 
two semitones down and that's the harmonica that you pick. So song in D, C harmonica. Why we often do this, the playing in third position, is because when you start on hold four draw, you can easily go up and use all the available notes and they all sound okay when you play in D, especially when you play a song in D minor, all the notes up from hole four, and I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the lower part because then you need the bendings, but when you go up and you use available notes, just available notes, Without bending, you can play on a song. And let me see, I got one over here. Let me see if you, let's do a, for, a short test if you can hear this. Uh, let me see. If I can. Um, can you hear this sound, Sam? Can you check this? It's okay, okay, then I'll, I'll start again. I'll, I'll just keep on playing on hole one, uh, sorry, uh, four, moving up a little, without bendings, just available notes. Just available notes on the harmonica, and there's not a single wrong note that you can play over there. So just for practice, I'll, I'll switch on the backing track. When you see harmonica, just noodle around between holes four and ten. I have it running and see if, if it fits you. So oh, that's the easy part, in fact. That's all you need to you, you, you need to start with in when you start practicing in third position. Um, now, when we translate this to the lower part harmonica, you first should know what did I play on the middle part. You play D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. That's all. The D, E, F. That's all you played. So these are the notes. These are the notes that we should find on the lower part as well. And for the people who know the C harmonica, who know the layout where the bending notes are and what the names are, you will realize you play on hold two draw, F. That's a... Oh, that's two semitones bent, and you play the A note on three draw, which is also two semitones bent. But that's where it becomes a bit tricky. But when you've mastered the bendings and you can play these notes, which means you got a, a huge range where you can play on harmonica when you play the, the two draw bands, two semitones, the three draw band, two semitones, play all the way up to hold 10 without making a mistake, without playing notes that doesn't, do not fit the song. I'll just put on the backing track, I'll play, a little, I'll play from hole one to hole nine or 10, and then you can practice a little for yourself on, on this.
Try it for yourself. So you can just for yourself, if you can try to play the two draw band, two semitones, the three draw band, work all the way up to hole 10. There we go. Hi, Ben. Um, sorry, the um, struggling to hear because it keeps breaking up. I think it's something to do with Zoom. Um, if you just play it a little bit uh, lower volume, I think that should be okay. Okay, yeah. Um, this, this is just, sorry, just... No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I didn't know. I just see some chats coming in. Yeah, your mic is coming it's, Sorry. It's, Sam, it's those two audio settings again. It is. Um, do you know about those, Ben? Happening. Let's see how this is. Is that okay? Yeah, that seems okay. Yeah. What's this, the things I'm telling? Uh, were they okay? You could hear what my my my, my telling about. Okay. Yeah. I just switch on the music and see if, if it keeps breaking up. The story was, well, try to work your way up from hole one. <laughs> until 10 draw. And that's all the notes that are easily placed into third position, blues and D, C harmonica. No? It's working, uh, Sam? Um, just, just try it again. I think it started breaking up again. It's funny because I have a very strong internet connection over here, so. Yeah, I think it's something to do with Zoom. I, I mean, I could give you a few quick instructions. Do you, want me, do you want me to run through it, Sam? Yeah, go on, you, you run through it, Trevor. What, what there is, Ben, is Zoom is set up for, voc for voice. So there's two settings in the audio. If you go down to where your mute button is on the bottom left, yep. there's an arrow next to it. Yep. If you click on that, the bottom option, I think, is uh, audio settings. Yeah. Yeah, if you click on that, it brings up a menu. Yeah, I got it. In that menu, there's an advanced bottom down the bottom right. Yeah, got it. If you click on that, there are... Uh, three options that are tickable that have got uh, tick boxes next to them mm -hmm. one is to um it's about um intermittent background noise so uncheck yeah. that one and there's one about constant background noise so uncheck that one as well okay because what it does it thinks that the harmonica play in the high notes is background noise so it mutes it so when you check those you can then come mm -hmm. out of that menu and it should be okay and the echo cancellation, I should leave an auto? You can leave that on, yeah. Okay. okay. Let's see what happens. Thanks, Trevor. Well, I, I noticed this, the, maybe it, it could be the MacBook. I'm using a MacBook Pro, and the microphone seems to, to clip sometimes a little. And I tried to lower the input volume, but still had a problem. It, it's but, not a clipping thing. It actually mutes it down. So it's quite distinct when it happens in Zoom. So. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a try. Is okay? And now? Okay, please have a go. That was perfect that time, Ben. This was okay, I guess. I see 
comments much better. Okay, thank you. It's good to know this. So this 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 was basically a, a lot of things you can do in third position already with when using the available notes on the C harmonica. This is also an explanation why it is so easy to play on the chromatic harmonica. Because the notes that I played now are all the notes that are available on the chromatic when I do not touch the button. That's why a lot of players like to play on songs in D minor on the chromatic because all the notes are there without having to use the, the button and having to use the button on a chromatic requires that you start studying a bit more about theory. So that's, that's one of the things why people often do this. You could also buy 12 chromatics in all 12 keys to make it easier, but that's not, well, it could be a bit cheating and it's very expensive, of course. I will now try to go a bit more into theory because there are a few things more that you have to know when you start doing this. And this is something that, that was to many people an eye opener when I first uh, started to use this in my lessons. And I tried to comprom compromise this a little to, otherwise I will be here uh, talking about it's two hours long, which is for me no problem, but it could be for you a bit of a problem. Um, first, I will go back to what we're used to. When, when you play in second position, a blues in G on your C harmonica, that's what, what, what we all know. So for the people who know this, when you play on your C harmonica, on the blues in G, I will play the blues scale, but you must remember, I do not play a C blues scale, I play the G blues scale, using this harmonica, which happens to be a C harmonica, and we call this in harmonica language, second position. That's how you should explain this to people who do not play harmonica. So I play a G blues scale. That's for most people who, who, who are capable and bending, okay to do. Now, when we have a song in the key of G, and you know which chords are played, and I made a note, and this will make it easier for you. We have the, the one chord, which is the G. Let's see if we can, yeah. The G chord is what we call the one. I'm, I'm not thinking, I'm not talking about too much music theory, this is called the one chord, the four chord is the C, and the D chord is the five, what we call in, what is called in harmonica language, blues chords. So you have three chords, the G chord, then you have the C chord, I play the root note, the beginning note, and the D. And as soon as you know the layout of the C harmonica, you can find all these notes on the harmonica because the G, the G note is two draw, three blow, six blow, and nine blow. C is one, four, seven, ten blow. D is one draw, four draw, and eight. So all these notes are there to, to mark the beginning of a chord. Now what happens, and this is this, just to tease you a little, when the, the, the song goes to the four chord, we get four bars of G. Then the fifth bar is the C chord. Now I could say, well, 
why should I be limited to playing just the G blues scale? Why shouldn't I play the C blues scale? Which is in jazz music and other music, people who study theory, a normal thing. So when you go back to your position thinking, when I play in C, on my C harmonica, I'm playing first position. So I could play the first position blue scale. Then when the song goes to the five chord in the ninth bar in general, the, the song is, goes to D, G, C, D. When you're in D, you play a C harmonica, you're in third position. So you could play your third position blue scale. I'm still talking about the D blue scale or the C blue scale or depending on what chord is played. When we are in G, and the song goes to C, C blue scale, and I fooled a little bit on hole one because I didn't play the one overblow. But this is almost the first position blue scale. Then the song goes to D, I could play the D blues scale. This all of a sudden means I get so many more notes when I start thinking outside the box when I, I'm, I'm still, and I'm working up my way now to third position, of course, because this was the workshop. But when you master this on the C harmonica, you can translate this when you remember which holes you've played in any position. Uh, let me see, I made a note for this. Yeah. Where is it? Okay. Well, I, I, I'll do it like this. The song, when I'm in third position, I start with the, the, the D chord. So I have to play the D blues scale if I want to play the D blues scale. And the D blues scale you can find it on the C harmonica when you check all, all the internet sites, etc. That's the D blue scale. Starts on hole one, on hole four, and so on eight. Then the song, and that's, that's the, the beauty about third position. The next chord, the fourth chord, is G. The G is what we just find out when I play on, on the C harmonica, second position, then all of a sudden I can switch to second position playing, which is very familiar. So when you're in the four chord and you play in third position, you can say, well, I can pretend I'm playing in second position. I start in third position. <laughs> then a the song goes to the G chord. Well, I play Second position. The licks that I already I'm familiar with. Then the, the five chord is an A chord. So now I should think, where's my A note? Where do I start on harmonica? Then I work my way up from, from A. So I, I, I play a series of notes that are related to the chord that is used in the song. This goes back to positions. That's, that's what, what the word position is used for in harmonica language. But in theory, I just know which note is played uh, by the band, and I know where the note is on harmonica. Because I've, I've, I've started the layout, I know where to start to find a certain note. That's why I use the C harmonica for the song in D, because on C it's easy to remember the notes. Once you've remembered where all the notes are on the C and which position relates to a certain note, then you can switch to other positions, other keys, because you know, well, I have to start on this hole. Because I know in fifth position, I start on two blow. I'm, I'm not thinking in, in which notice. I, I know what, which hole is my starting hole. And 
if I have to play in fourth position, I know I have to start on three draw, all tone bent. Second position, I start on hold two draw. First position, I start on hold one, all four blow. And this way, you can work up your, your playing in, uh, through all positions. You must remember where all the notes are on C harmonica, know how the note names are, the bent notes. Then you go back to basic theory, look at, at a song, take, take an, another, um, for example, take a song in the key of E. When you play a blues song in the key of E, the use chords are A, uh, sorry, you start in E, A, and D. Could I play on a song in E on a C harmonica? Yes, why not? I have to know where's my E note on the C harmonica to blow. From there, I could try to build a blues skill. Then you have the blues scale in, from E. Then the song goes to A. Hey, I've done it in third position as well. I played from A. Hey, that's familiar to me. Then the song goes to D. Hey, I have my C harmonica at third position. I play from hole one draw or four draw. So basically what I've told you now, I know it, it sounds confusing in the beginning, but this is most of the theory that you need to study to avoid getting stuck in, in harmonica language. So and one of the things also to remember, I, I said, when you have to know which harmonica do I have to use in third position, you have to think back to semitones, you know the key of the song, go down to semitones, that's harmonica. Another thing to remember, when you start a, a, in a song in third position, um, when the band switches to the four chord, you play in second position. When the, the band starts, goes to the five chord, you play fifth. So in fact, what, what you, and I will quickly write it down for you to remember. This makes it a bit more understandable. When you're in third position, the band starts and you play in third position. When the band switches to the four chord, you think I'm in second. When it goes to the five chord, I'm in fourth position. When you play in second position, you play second position, first position, and third. It's always one number down, one number up. So if I play, start playing in sixth position, sixth position, I would play six, six position, five and seven. One down, one up. When you can remember this for all the positions that you, that you play, and we don't play that many positions, you get more possibilities. When I play in third position, and I, I will tr try to break it down a bit more now. I start in third position. Then the band goes to the, to the four chord. I play second position. Back to third position. Then I go to fourth position. Back to etc. So you always can go back to different positions. When you go back to a certain position, you can play the blue scale, you can play chord notes, you can play minor pentatonic, you can play all these different things that you could practice to, to, to go from beginner to, to intermediate to advanced to, to a pro player. But everybody has to practice all these basic things. So who are, are people already running out now and starting to scream and, and shut down their computer and throw away their harps? 
because I, I know it's confusing, but when you really go back to the basics, it's all about knowing why you play a certain position because of the sound, because of the notes, why you feel better in a certain position. I know where to start, I know where to go. Um, how can I switch positions in a song? Think one number down, one number up. You start in second position, you also play in first, you also play in third. Start in fourth position, you also play in third, you also play in fifth. Then you must think, okay, where are my beginning notes for this position? And this may help you a little and bring you down to earth again. Most of the songs are played in second position. 90% uh, of the songs that you hear are played in second position. So when you focus on second, that's already something. And I showed you when you play in second position, you play second, first and third, you automatically will practice third position a little. Really. Just to combine this again with the music, the song, let me start off my computer again. I will play a short example of, why is my computer not? Oh, there it is. I will do this backing track again, and I will switch positions and see if you can hear what I'm doing, and afterwards I, I will tell you what I did. So I start in, in third, when the band switches to another chord, I go to, to first, uh, second, and I go to fourth. Three, two, four. Let's see this. Third position. Go to second position. Go back to third. Fourth position. Third position, beginning notes, one four draw. Second position, two draw. Six blow. Back to third. Fourth position. So now I play just the beginning notes of the chord, just to show you where I am. And I'm, I'm playing a certain range on the harmonica. I'm playing the root notes from the one chord. Then I go to the four chord, which is second position. Then I go to fourth position, the A note on the C harmonica, three draw bending whole note, six draw. And ten draw as well. That's my range and always have to work in this range on the harmonica, which give, gives me possibilities to study where I place my licks. I will start the backing track once more, and when I have to stop, just some will shut me down, I guess. But I will play the root notes and name them and see if you can more or less hear and follow what I'm doing. Now I will, I will call out the, the note names and the, the holes that I'm playing. I start in third position, I play one draw, four draw, eight draw. The D note. Then I go to second position in the G note. Back to the D. A note. G. D. And as soon as I, as, when my coordination is getting better and I know where to move on harmonica, which range I use, then I can combine this with scales and chord notes and minor pentatonic, all these scales that you can use for blues, and it all feels and sounds good. Because when I have 
and this is maybe one of the last things that I want to show before I answer some questions. When I have this range, I try to stick to this range and play some in between notes. Of course, I know where I am, but now I will do some improvising, but I will use the range that, that I talked about. <laughs> This gives me a totally different sound and feel in, in the song. In the beginning, you will be confused like hell you, because you lose your coordination on the harmonica. But as soon as you start to recognize where you have to move, where the root notes are, and this is maybe the, the key thing that you must remember, find the root notes on the harmonica in any position that you, can, that you have to use. In the third position, the root notes were one draw, a draw, one, four, eight. Um, in the four chord, it was like in second position. Two draw, six blow, nine blow. Then on fourth position, it was on the five chord. Three draw band, six draw and ten draw. And then you have already, you, 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 you've decided this is my range where I play. Go back to second position to, to maybe simplify it a, bit, a little bit for you because you're used in second position. Second position, you start on the G chord. Two draw, three blow, six blow, nine blow. And you go to the C chord, you find your C notes. One, four, seven, ten. Then the band goes to the D chord, and we already know where the, where the D notes were because we discussed it. And then you, you, you already have different range on the harmonica. Next step is practice like hell to find all these combinations. But this will open up a whole new world for you. So I think we should maybe go back to some questions. Uh, any, any questions there at all? Um, if you want to unmute yourselves. Okay, I see there's a, com a few comments there, Ben. I think um, uh, I need to sit down with a beer and, uh, and absorb yeah. all this very slowly. She's coming, yeah. And, and it, I, I think that's, I mean, it's funny because you, you sort of touched on something that I did in my workshop about finding those there's anchor notes, which I, I think... Listen, listen to your workshop, so... Yes, it's, uh, you're copying off me, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no. But I, I think that's so important, isn't it? It's, it's sort of great you've mentioned that as well, because that, that is your starting point for each of those, each of those chord changes. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd suggest if anyone's a little bit lost now, is if they listen to you again um, once it's recorded... Mm. Um, and, and of course, you know, you can always contact me. I'm sure, sure, Ben would help you, or, or you could um, tune into Ben's workshop on a on a Wednesday. Or uh... yeah, I, I've planned to to discuss this a bit more on one of the the, the chats on on Wednesday, Wednesday evening mm. in, in English as well. So I, when people want to come in, I, I I can send them the link. Anyway, it's, it, when you find uh, when you find Ben Barman Blues as one word on Facebook, then you will come to my the page where I, where I always have my live chat. But it's it's I hope 
and, and this, this confusing people was on purpose a little because I want to awake, uh, make people aware of what, what to do in harmonica. It should be something that every player who, who goes from beginner to intermediate to advanced should know. And just a few pieces of paper that, that I use to explain most of the basics, at least for me, these, these are basic. But as soon as you start to, to, to master this, you will become a much better big player because you, you can use the whole range of notes on harmonica. You will feel more comfortable in playing the high notes because you know what to play and what the note names are, which combinations are good. I'm not even talking about scales. It's about which movements do you make on harmonica. You have to patch your coordination. I, I'm not sure how many times I've played blue scales on harmonica, but ten thousands of times. But not to play the blue scale, just to practice my body. How how does it, how does it respond when I make this movement? It's coordination, and. The, the talent of playing many notes is not a talent. The talent of playing these notes in a controlled way, back to what I said, my two main things with tone and groove is what makes a, a, a player a better player. But almost, almost any good player is using this. Most of them are aware of what's, what's going on. But it, that's why it helps you to become uh, a better play and it, it speeds up your 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 way of learning these these basic things so my advice will always be find a teacher that can 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 help you with this uh, this subject I, I think one of the the things about blues harmonica is, is that when you first start playing you know unlike something like a trombone or a violin you can get quite a good sound fairly early on can you <laughs> And that's, that's great, but I think it's when you then start looking beyond that. And, you know, I, I'm, I've got quite an analytical mind, so the theory, you know, I think what notes goes with this. But, I, but you know, I play with people who, um, who don't, who just say, well, I'll just play this scale over, you know, over the whole, the whole 12 bar. Yeah. But I always think that they're then limiting themselves. Even, even what they're doing sounds really, really good. Yeah, I think well, you're limiting yourself. The more little bits, little you don't have to go into theory into massive detail. Just learn little bits, learn scales, um, and then that is going to that's going to bring your playing on so so much. And yeah. you mentioned scales, and it, it's um, it's the thing of oh, blum and neck learning. You know, I, I, when my daughter was playing piano, she. Had, up to grade six she's basically playing all these scales in in every key you know and you think god that must be so so tedious for for her and everything but i went strange enough when she was having a piano exam i was practicing in the car um practicing all the different scales in 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 second position third position fourth position fifth position major minor scales and i know that sounds a lot um but as you as you develop your playing, then these things will become second nature. You know yeah. that's that that's it's re repetition, repetition, and and repetition is that's that's the only way it's going to go in. So we do these workshops. That's not going to make you a a, a a brilliant player. It's going away and taking. You know, at least if you take from my workshop two or three things, then you know, that's going to then help you to develop into, in, into a much better, much, much better player and be a little bit more versatile. Yeah. But in the end, for me, it's all about how is the, the, the tone that a certain player produces. I, when I switch on a song on my computer, within a split second, I can hear by, just by the, 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 the tone, by the sound he's making, mm -hmm. who's playing. It's, it's not about the notes he's playing. It's, it's not about the style. It's not about the virtuosity. It's, it's the, the tone that's touching me. It's, it's not all these many notes. So although I, 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 I did some theory, although I practice my scales, I, I, although I practice my speed on harmonica, it all comes down to how you play this, 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 this instrument that can do anything for you to produce this beautiful sound. Mm -hmm. For me, the beautiful sound is just playing one note with tremolo or vibrato. 
That's mm -hmm. why I talked about these bendings. And I did, a, I did a chat about tremolo and vibrato. That's the signature of a player. His tone, his tremolo, his vibrato, and his groove. Tone mm -hmm. and groove are always the two things with, that, 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 that makes a player so much better. Are there any, any other questions? Um, yeah, watch again and we'll and practice. That's um, Michael has mentioned that, and I, I think it's just reiterating what I've, what I've said previously. Um, do we want to wrap it up there? Ben was going to talk about some uh, customizing harps, but uh, people starting to flag now. What, what I can just see in the corner of his screen a microscope there, but. Um, there, there's his microscope, and uh, and I mean Ben's customized I think, three harps for me. My my workshop. There we go. and 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 for me, I mean, I'd, I'd say I'm at the early early end of advanced, but it, it does make a difference, you know. But if you're a beginner, then it's it's not the it's not probably not the time to think about it. It's get yourself a decent harmonica to start with, and then get all the basic stuffs down. Yeah. And I think it was um, Lee Sankey who said a couple of weeks ago about, you know, you can you can learn all the techniques, the sort of the you know the 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 voodoo that's um, overblows and things like that. But his point was all about timing as well. You know, it's, it's all very well having having all those tools in in your toolbox, but it's when you bring it all together. It's like the scales. The scales sort of sit in the back. You know, you're not going to go through a solo in a in a live situation going through scales and playing scales over a, over, over a 12 bar. But having that knowledge, you, know, you can use a little bit of a scale, but having that knowledge, it, things then come to mind, you know, you, you, you're trying to think of what notes would go nicely in a solo. And, and I mean, that, that's how I work. It's just um, th uh, think, um, think while I'm playing um, and rather than just sort of playing blindly, but even so, um, you know, get, getting going, as I say, just doing a type thing. That's your starting point. You've also got to do, put the hard work in of scales and, and general graft and hours and hours of practice. <laughs> but but the easiest advice will be find a teacher who, who, who can tell you and, and give you exercise on how to get a better tone. Mm. It's I, I can go back and do many many exercises now just playing the, the notes that belong to a scale but this will never make you a better player without having the tone I will always come back to tone building is the, 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 the most important thing on harmonica mm. well if, if you can were I a ask singer, a question yeah of course so, sorry Ben uh, it's okay. uh, this is about customizing um, and I actually do half valving on the first harmonicas I got were Lee Oscars. Hmm. Um, I'm, and I've half valved them because I found half valving easier to get the missing notes than overblowing setups on Lee Oscars because of their design. Hmm. I'm thinking of migrating slowly towards sidle ones uh, P.T. Gazelle does a, a session steel one, yep. and he also does the silver, uh, 1847 silver. Is there any difference between the, uh, how, how both play, how, can I get uh, the session, the session steel is a bit more like the Lee Oscar in, with the way that it's made. Hmm. Um, will that give me the same, uh, same results as the silver. Well, the session steel is already a good harmonica, but when you look at the comb, you see they have these hollow tines. Yeah. And a reed plate will never uh, uh, make a hundred percent contact to okay. the hollow tines. So you will always lose a little bit, not really air, but a little bit. Uh, you lose a bit back pressure when you play the note. It doesn't respond as quickly as on the solid comb from, okay. from the silver. It's 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 a minor difference. It's it's it's, it's very little. But I feel a difference because maybe I'm an experienced player and I customize. Maybe 
the beginner won't notice a difference. So it's it's already a very good harmonica, especially when it's when it's half valved, you lose less air and you overcome it. But I feel when you play the missing notes, like 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 uh, the overblown notes that you can play with uh, blow no, uh, blow bendings on on the half valve, you get a bit more control on the silver. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Yep. Can I just say, Bob, I've gone down exactly that same route from going from Lee Oscars, then up to 1847s. Um, and then Ben's uh, customized a few um, for me, and that's to help get more airtight so I can get those overblows. So, um, yeah, so, so I know where you're coming from, and um, what you say or what your plan is, it's, it sounds very, very sensible. Yeah. Unless I'm daft, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't sound daft. I, I found that when I, the moment I started half valving, the Lee Oscars took a step up in tone and quality yeah. but i'm finding that the session steals i've got a couple but i don't know whether they I, i'm going the, down the best route i think maybe the silver um uh, do it pt uses this the the, the curved um covers yeah compared to the the normal ones any much difference there well, the cover plate doesn't have a, 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 a big influence on the sound. It's right. only the cover plates are a bit smaller and more closed in the back. So the player will hear less overtones and right. think it does, it's not as loud, it's not as bright. But when you make a recording on a good microphone, and I'll play the same note on the Session Steel, and the same note on the 8047, there's almost no more difference. Mm. Because but the, the player hears less overtones and thinks it's, it's not as loud as the other one. Yeah. Combined with the feeling from a bit more back pressure, a, a bit more precise playing on 847, it makes it a different harmonica. But for recording, I can I can play a session steel. Let's see, where is it? Do I have one? Uh, where is it? Well, this is maybe not the best example, but this are session steel reed plates with, with different uh, cover plates yeah. on it, like, a, and it will sound the same as my 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 eighty forty seven. Here's my customized session steel. No difference. I put a different comp on a session steel, but the reed plates are still a session steel. But I have to say, the reed plate material and, and, and the dimensions are, and the reeds are exactly the same on the 8047 and the session steel. Right. Just the comb is different and the cover plates. The rest is identical. Thank you very much. Very yeah. helpful. You're welcome. Um, the, the other, so, uh, it sounds like I'm playing Seidel as well, but... Um, the reeds are so much more durable. I mean, I've had um, I've had a C somewhere since about 2013, and it, and it's I've given it a lot of welly over the years, and it's still perfectly in tune. So you you know if you think well, 70 quid or 80 quid, that sounds a lot of money for a harmonica. If you think well, actually, if you might go through three Lee Oscars in that time, you've haven't got a, a um, the better harmonicas. But then you're still going to pay more over the long in the longer term, um, so I'd, yeah, I, I think the 1847s are, are, are tremendous. I mean, I, I did get a couple of the Lightnings, which are meant to be the new um, Seidel harmonicas. You know, the the, the, the up from the 1847s, and I have, to say, I have to say I don't like them at all. I come back to the 1847, thinking no, that that that's the one for me. So. Um, they look nice and, and they're really, really heavy because they've got, um, hmm. I think it's aluminium. Or yeah, well, it's, uh, it's steel. It's, it's yes, steel. yes, yes, yeah, stainless steel, isn't it? It's solid stainless steel cone. Uh, absolutely beautiful looking thing, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll stick to these little ones. The, well, uh, I'll tell you the secret when you, my custom harps are a bit better set up than the standard lightning harps. Mm. And that's the gives a different feel. It's, it's not the harmonica; it's the way 
how do you reach respond to your to your breathing to your breath control to the way you you play the the notes to play how how you bend the notes it's 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 a personal thing and you get used to custom harmonicas and then it's difficult to to switch back to to standard harmonicas mm. but the custom lightning has the same feeling will have the same feeling for you as 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 a custom 8047 mm. Okay, any, any other questions at all? We may as well wrap this up. Can I ask a question, please? Of course you can, yes. Uh, hi, Ben. Hi, Stan. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody. Uh, about tone, you were talking about tone while ago. To achieve mm -hmm. a better tone, would you not use a pl uh, tongue block to get a better tone? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> that's, that's a vague answer, I know. But I'm, I started out as a pucker player. Yeah. Uh, I switched to tongue block 20, 30 years ago. Went back to pucker again, used both. And I've come to a point where I don't think about which technique I'm using. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, well, my body has to do this to get this certain tone. Sometimes it's tongue blocked. Sometimes it's pocket. Sometimes uh, I, I switch very quick between. Sometimes I, have do, I do what I call a fake tongue block. So it's, it's a personal thing in general. Tongue blocks gives you many more possibilities on the harmonica, of course, because of the, the tongue slaps, the, 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 the flutter, the, all these techniques that you can do, the octaves that you play. But I'm, I did some tests where I played the two draw with the same attack as I did on, on uh, tongue blocked and, and pucker on the harmonica, made a very good recording with a good microphone, good studio, no difference. You could see, we, we did some measurements, we could see the, the, the whole graphics. I had the same overtones, but that's me. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. saying uh, anyone else will, will have the same. When TongueBlock gives you a better tone and you have to make a recording for that, use TongueBlock. There was a discussion with Kim Wilson and, uh, and, and, and Joe Felisco, et cetera, about TongueBlock. But Kim Wilson also said, well, I pack it sometimes for certain sounds in a certain song at a certain moment, I want to have this, this uh, uh, tongue block uh, or, or pucker, pucker tone. When I play my five draw and I want to sound old school, aggressive, very screaming out note, I use pucker because it's more, <coughs> this has to be pucker. You cannot do this with tongue block, this aggressive. For a mellow tone, more mellow would be a tongue block. Would that be correct? Yeah, it gives it gives a bit bit less overtones. But I I emphasize this this the overtones by using a different embouchure when, when I play the, this note. I can play the two draw with a thin tone by using pucker small resonance room. I make it bigger again. Left tongue block, right tongue block, pucker. Same sound all the time, same notes, same overtones. But my body is, of course, trained to produce this tone. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's physical training, it's, 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 it's physical exercise. It's, it's not about one technique, but it's very useful to, to practice tongue block. It will improve your pucker tone building as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ben, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, Em? No, okay. Um, well, thanks everyone for dropping in again. I say it's absolutely gorgeous out there. Um, 25 degrees here, or I can't, don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Um, but just to say um, a great thanks to Ben. I think it's been a brilliant hour and a bit. That's, you know, really, really appreciate that, Ben. It's um, um, really, really interesting. Um, and certainly answering some of the questions about the, the customized harmonicas. That sort of, and um, what Bob mentioned, it's it's just sort of, it's reassuring that people are going down that same that same road as well. Um, can I just say coming up then, next week it's well we got Neil Warren in a chromatic harp sh uh, workshop, so I'm not sure who else plays um, chromatic. Uh, I'm still trying to get the get someone else to play. I've had about three people who've said yes and then and then uh, said they can't do it then. So it might just be Neil next week. 
then coming up we've also got Will Wilde, um, Adam Glass are doing a, a, a chromatic workshop in a few weeks, Richard Gems, um, that's the end of the month, and also got Joe Felisco, um, he said he'd do one, and Marcin, Mar, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his name, Mar, Marsan Dajac, he's, he's Polish, and I'm also um, in contact with Jason's, Jason Ritchie's um, agent, so um, hopefully he'll be able to do one as well, so... Um, which is my favourite player, so... <laughs> Behind you, Ben, of course. <laughs> let, let, before I forget, let, let me thank all the people who, who, have, who had the patience to watch my, not really workshop, but more explanation about the position. And I hope you, you have some things that you can work on. And the, in the chat, I, I gave my email address, mail at benbarmanharmonicas.nl, do not hesitate to send me an email with questions when you have a question about how, how to work in third position, what, what I told today, send me an email and I will answer the, the email. That's my offer for all the people who attended my not so easy workshop today. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Well, can I say thanks again, Ben, and we can, should we, uh, should we all go out and enjoy the sunshine now then? Well, I had planned to go out on my mountain bike this afternoon, but I stayed at home okay. before for the workshop. Well, so. well, the sun won't be as hot now, so. Well, I've, I've, I've planned a long mountain bike ride coming Monday. Uh, I always try to do once a month uh, at least 70, 70 miles on the wow. mountain bike. So, yes, it's too, too hot for that today, I think. <laughs> But I'll, I'll leave early in the morning when I do this, so. Yeah. Okay, everyone, again, thanks, thanks very much, and hopefully see you next week. Um, and uh, take care of yourselves. Okay, bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ben.